after spiritualizing the mind, the emotions and the dynamic energy, the center of consciousness of the Indian civilization shifted further down around 1100 CE. The root chakra or the muladhara corresponds to the physical consciousness according to Sri Aurobindo. In the long historic process, this shift brought forth the body consciousness and its spiritualization as the next stage in India's mission. It emerged naturally as a continuation of the ongoing development of Tantra and the knowledge of the chakras. The divinization of the body became the field of research and mastery for the yogins of India. To accomplish this, Hatha Yoga was developed and systematized based on the ancient wisdom. Yogic asanas and related processes were developed and practiced to master the body, its health and longevity for a spiritual life. For a Hatha Yogin, the body is not a mere mass of living matter but a mystic bridge between the spiritual and the physical being. He does not view it with the eye of the anatomist or physiologist, but describes and explains it in terms of the subtle body behind the material frame. Hatha Yoga gave to the soul in the physical body the power, the light, the purity, the freedom and the ascending scales of spiritual experience. However, they were not able to discover the true characteristic method and power of spirit in the body that could transform and divinize the body. The methods of Hatha Yogins were physical, laborious and difficult and demanded most of their time and energy. They had to withdraw from society and the utilization of the powers gained for the welfare of the world became either impracticable or were extraordinarily restricted. On the other hand, the consciousness of the civilization was on its further downward movement into the subconscious ranges that were more dull, passive and steeped in inertia. At the same time, the philosophy of illusionism was gaining popularity in India. The world was increasingly seen as a dream, an illusion, maya, to be discarded. The yogins withdrew from society in pursuit of individual solitary salvation. Indian civilization was steadily falling into a state of inertia and a dream state of sleep. Renunciation of the worldly life became the norm. The civilization withdrew from its outward expansion and turned into a state of inward absorption. This made possible the Islamic invasions from Central Asia to gain deep inroads into the Indian subcontinent. And India couldn't defend herself from looting and destruction of her temples and universities. By 1500 CE, most of India came under foreign rule. The Vijayanagara and Maratha empires were the last powerful creative outbursts of Indian civilization sourcing from her ancient stream.
However, they couldn't prevail against the invasions. The Indian culture became increasingly conservative. Meanwhile, materialism and modern science was rising up in Europe. The rising powers of Europe found their way to India. The British colonization of India was even more devastating than the Islamic invasions. The British not only looted India's material wealth, but also destroyed her economy and the ancient education system. By 1900, India was not only materially poor, but also culturally devastated. Instead of conquering and spiritualizing the body, the yogins looked at the body as a burden to be discarded in pursuit of the spirit. Spirituality became a withdrawal and rejection of material life. 